قال الله تعالى في كلامه المجيد اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة معرضون وقال الله تعالى انهم يرونه بعيدا ونراه قريبا وقال الله تعالى في سورة النبا عما يتساءلون عن النبا العظيم الذي هم فيه مختلفون كلا سيعلمون ثم كلا سيعلمون The important matter we are going to discuss today is about the time we are living in. Since the beginning of human age, there has been a destiny written, a destination written for the mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is the one who was before everything and he will, and he will be the one who would be after everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is uncreated and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will never cease to exist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created everything. Everything everything each and everything in the whole universe in the seven skies and on the earth and beyond was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to die one day just like that when human race started on the on the earth there was a time written for the human race that human race would once cease to exist there will be an end to the human race and since the beginning of the mankind people have been thinking about the end of the times according to some sources some authentic sources we get to know that the human race has been has been living on this earth for 700,000 years and today we are living in the time where there have been a lot of signs which suggest that we are living in the times that the human race is going is coming to its end Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after sending the humans on the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent 124,000 prophets and Rusul and Anbiya to guide the human race and when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam our children, our parents, our whole lives. We are ready to sacrifice everything for the name of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was sent on the, on the earth, he was told, Ana khatamun nabiyyin la nabiyya ba'di. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last prophet there is going to be no prophet after prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it's a point to ponder that the human race has been living on the earth for 700000 years and there has been 124000 or more anbiya and rusul and the prophets and the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have been sent on the earth and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last one out of all those. So what does this suggest? So it does suggest, it does suggest rather it makes it certain 
rather it may it confirms the fact that the human race is about to end and the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not coming anymore in the form of messengers and the prophets so prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself when he came when he was born and when he was given nabuwa was the sign of Qiyamah itself and not only that when Prophet Muhammad Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away from this world and went to meet his Rabb our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it was the sign of Qiyamah Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he raised his fingers like this and then said myself and Qiyamah are like this Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told his Sahaba that myself and Qiyamah are like this like these two fingers are attached together and not apart from each other similarly Qiyamah and Prophet Muhammad Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are not apart from each other and it has been 1400 years since Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was living on this earth and if you compare the 700,000 years life of human race Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Qiyama are very near just like they are attached just like these two fingers are attached with each other and since since 1400 years ago the scholars and the people have been telling people about the signs of Qiyama but now it has become clear that we are the generation if we live long enough are certainly the ones who would who would be the last of the people of this ummah and since the beginning of the ummah whenever someone whenever some scholars whenever some people guided people invited people to the signs of Qiyama and reminded them that we are living in the times that Qiyama is near the people have been people have been making fun of them and they have been saying that oh this is the things these are the things we have been hearing for so long but my brothers and sisters my younger ones and my elders who are listening who are watching there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that changes everything. It is true that people have been thinking that Kama is very near in every generation. The signs of Kiyama have been coming true for so long but nobody ever knew when will the last hour occur so there is a hadith there is a saying of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which changes everything which gives us goosebumps and which 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 must shake us to rethink about to re rethink everything and to rethink what the time we are living in and the signs that are appearing today and that hadith my brothers and sisters my elders and my youngers is that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my ummah will be given half day Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his sahaba that I hope
from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that my ummah will be given to live at least a half day. The companions, the Sahaba of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, O oh, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Muhammad Rasulullah, what does this mean? What does this half day time span of the Ummah mean? The Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, it means 500 years. And as we all know, that one day, one day in the timeline, in the time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is 1000 years in our time. One day in Allah's time is 1000 years in our time. So, in accordance to that, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied that this means 500 years. That this ummah can be given 500 years, a half day time span. Allama Suyuti Rahimahullah, he has been a famous scholar of Hadith. He described and explained this Hadith and he wrote that this Hadith means a half day after one day. That this Ummah will be given 500 more years after 1000 years of time span. I hope I'm making sense. So it means that the time span of this Ummah will be around 1500 years. And my brothers and sisters, this must give us goosebumps. And this must shake our hearts. And this must shake us from within. And we must realize and pay attention to the time we are living in. My brothers and sisters, according to Hijri calendar, according to the lunar Islamic calendar, we are living in the year 1433. So if we have been able to understand this hadith well enough, and if this is what and if Allama Suyuti, if what Allama Suyuti Rahimahullah said is correct, which certainly is, then my brothers and sisters, there is no time left. We are already living in 1433. There is not even 70 years left. For the age of this Ummah. The time given to us is coming to an end. The time given to this Ummah has actually come to an end. We have so little time. And if we study a Hadith, and if we study the sayings of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Khatamun Nabiyyin, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may our children, our parents, our lives, our, our, our mal, our wealth, our fortune, everything is ready to be sacrificed on Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of the signs, if you study, all of the signs, all of the signs, and I would emphasize that again, that all of the signs, the minor ones, explained by Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have been fulfilled already. I have little knowledge, my brothers and sisters, I have little knowledge. And whatever I've studied, within the box of my little knowledge 
all of the minor signs of Qiyama I have been able to find have been fulfilled already. Some people had questions and somebody mentioned that there has been many some minor signs which they have not been able to find and one of them they said was the appearance of the yellow banners in Kitab al fitan by, by Nu'aym bin Hamad you would find a sign of Qiyamah that yellow banners would appear as a minor sign of Qiyamah so somebody mentioned that this, this sign may not have been fulfilled yet but my brothers and sisters if, we, if, if you recall in Egypt a few years ago when President Morsi's government was overthrown and the military rule took over under the leadership of the current military ruler of Egypt Mr. Sisi then you must remember that the supporters of President Morsi they came out with the yellow signs they came out with the yellow banners and the banners had the sign in the form of four fingers just like this and it was written Rabia underneath that sign and those were the yellow banners that appeared in Egypt and those banners were raised by supporters of Morsi President Morsi all over the world so the sign of yellow banners have already been fulfilled as well then there is another difficult sign to find which at least I was the one who had very little expectation that it would be fulfilled so quickly and that sign was that hadith says that some tribes of Arab would return to shirk would return to worshipping the idols and when this hadith passed through my eyes I was like there is a lot of time before Qiyamah that was my feeling because there is there are Arabs most of the Arabs we find to be the practicing Muslims the month of Ramadan al Mubarak is the most it appears to be the most blessed one in Arab there has there there are Salatul Tarawi there is fasting similarly Al Harmain Al Sharifain the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Kaabatullah is in Arab the masjid of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Masjid al Nabawi is also in Arab and many and most Arabs are still very practicing when it comes to Islam so I was like there must be a lot of time before Qiyamah because Arabs would be so backward and Arabs would become returned to Jahiliya in such a fashion that some of them would start worshipping idols I was not expecting this sign to come true anytime soon but my brothers and sisters very few days after that we found a news from UAE that a mandir has been inaugurated in UAE by, by the Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi and that mandir is one of the biggest mandirs Mandir, if you guys don't know, if someone doesn't know, is a place of worship of idols by Hindus. A huge mandir has been built in UAE. 
by the government of UAE and the Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi was invited to inaugurate that mandir not only that but the hosts but the recipients and the hosts of Modi they not only built the mandir inaugurated it but also Nauzubillahi min zalik joined the inauguration by worshipping the idols Nauzubillahi min zalik so my brothers and sisters the sign of Qiyamah that I have been expecting to 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 be fulfilled in far future has already been fulfilled some years ago the point is that all of the minor signs of Kyama has have already been fulfilled so this is the time for the major signs this is the time of the major signs of Kyama and as we all know there are four major signs of Kyama and the first one of them is appearance of Imam al-Mahdi the first one of the four major signs of Qiyamah is the appearance of Imam al-Mahdi and the second one second one is the coming out of the Jah the Antichrist and the third one is the return of son of Mary the son of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam Nabi Isa alayhi salam the return of Jesus Christ the son of Mary the son of Isa ibn Mar the son of Maryam Nabi Isa alayhi salam he will return back from the sky that is the third sign of Qiyamah and the fourth one is Gog and Magog so my brothers and sisters this is the time for four major signs of Kyama and let me repeat there are four which are the four major signs the first one is the appearance of Imam al-Mahdi and the second one my brothers and sisters my children and my elders is the coming out of the Jal, the Antichrist and the third one is the coming back of the son of Mary Nabi Isa alayhi salam son of Maryam Nabi Isa alayhi salam and the fourth one is the coming out of Gog and Magog there are two other major things that would take place before Qiyamah but I'm not saying them the signs of Kyama. I'm saying there are two other major things, major appearances, major events that will happen before Kyama. But I'm not saying them, calling them the signs of Kyama on purpose. Because according to the hadith of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when those two occur, there would be no returning there would be no astaghfar there would be no forgiveness the one who is virtuous would be virtuous the one who is sinful would be sinful the one who is mu'min would be mu'min the one who is kafir infidel would be infidel there would be no chance of istighfar there would be no chance of accepting Islam then there would, be, there would be no chance of repentance then and those major occurrences those two major occurrences those two major events before Qiyamah are number one the rise of the sun from the west and the other one is the coming of is the 
coming out of Dabatul Ars, an animal that would come out of the earth and that animal would stamp people according to their their iman that animal dabbatul ars would stamp the mu'mins and the kafirs so th those two signs we can call them the occurrences of qiyamah itself because there would be no repentance after that so my brothers and sisters this is to remind you all including myself this is to wake us all up to the fact that we are living in the time that there is little or no time before Kyama. All of the minor signs of Kyama have already been fulfilled and this is the time of the major signs. And this is no time to make fun of the callers towards Allah. There is no time to make fun of these signs of Kiyama and this is the time to ponder upon this awakening and wake up to the fact that this is the time for the first major sign to appear and that first major sign is the appearance of Imam al-Mahdi my brothers and sisters and many of you have been so blessed alhamdulillah alhamdulillah ala zalik many of you have been so blessed to have seen and met the true Imam al-Mahdi in your dreams. The ones out of you who are listening and I can see the names within this Zoom meeting, there, there are 50 participants and I know some who have been true and sincere in their asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show them the true Imam al-Mahdi. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been so merciful to them that they did actually meet the Imam al-Mahdi in their dreams. And when Allah wills, inshallah, Allah will make people like themselves and us and all of us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give us the recognition of the true Imam al-Mahdi that we will be able to recognize him, meet him and help him and support him. So my brothers and sisters, there are a lot of signs associated with Imam al-Mahdi. There are many things Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told about Imam al-Mahdi that first of all Imam al-Mahdi as many people expect to be an Imam or a religious scholar that is a possibility my brothers and sisters but more than that the signs of Imam al-Mahdi explained by Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describe and make it certain that Imam al-Mahdi would be someone who would lead Ummah out of darkness. And according to one hadith of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, told his sahaba, that even if one day is left before Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would extend that day to make a person appear from the lineage of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To make a person, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that even if one day is left before Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would extend that day and make a person appear from my lineage who would have tall nose and white forehead and he will fulfill and he will fill up the whole earth with justice just like the earth would be filled with zulm at that time so that person would be a leader 
that would lead the whole Ummah out of darkness and he would be he would be a chief commander of the forces he would be the chief supreme leader of the Muslims as well he would be the Amir al Mu'mineen as well and that person would lead the Ummah out of darkness and that, um, that person would shatter all of the current systems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. And this is the time we have to look for that person. The many people over here already have already been able to understand those signs and have been able and have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to even meet Imam al-Mahdi in their dreams. So this is the time for others as well to start to ponder upon this and start to seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if this is the time for Imam al-Mahdi if this is the time when great wars would take place then oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh merciful ya rahman ya rahim ya muqallib al gulub guide us towards the truth make us meet and recognize the true imam al mahdi and we must we all must pray allahumma arina al haqqa haqqan warzuqna ittiba'a oh allah show us the truth as the truth warzuqna ittiba'a and make us follow the truth be with the truth allahumma arina al batila batila Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us understand, understand the falsehood and make us avoid the falsehood and make us be with the forces of the truth instead of forces of falsehood. So this is the time for that dua, that prayer, that was the initial coverage of the topic and that was a little awakening for all of you for all of us including myself to ponder upon the fact that we are living in the times when major signs would appear and this is the time for Imam al-Mahdi in the next lecture inshallah we would cover specifically the topic of Imam al-Mahdi in detail inshallah and you all are welcomed and invited to prepare for next Wednesday around the same time inshallah you would all receive the invitation as well uh, let's take some questions now أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا التباع وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابا اللهم اجعلنا مع أصحاب المهدي اللهم اجعلنا حنيفا مسلما